Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Marketing Spotlight, where we share the career journeys of Michigan State University marketing alumni. I'm your host, Katie Sadler, and today with us, we have Zach Dorr. Zach graduated in 2015 with a degree in marketing and a minor in sales. He's now a commercial business manager at Ford. Thank you for joining us, and welcome to the Marketing Spotlight, Zach. Thanks, Katie. I, I'm so excited to be here. We're excited to have you here today and to learn a little bit about your experiences, both while you were on campus and since you've left campus. Um, but we really just wanted to start out with some rapid fire questions to get to know you a little bit better. Sound good? Sounds great. Okay, so starting us out, can you describe yourself in three words? I would say that I am adventurous, family focused, and I'd like to consider myself a helper too. Wonderful. What's your favorite music genre? I listen to not much music, but when I do a lot of it's worship music or some rap too. Uh, I like my uh, Michigan rapper NF is my favorite. Awesome. Different ends of the spectrum. I like that yeah. variety. Uh, what is your most used productivity hack? So I'm not sure if this is my most used, but I am amazed at how many people that I have taught control shift T in any web browser opens a page that you might have accidentally closed, um, whatever last page you're on in your web browser. I use that one as well, and it is very helpful. So I'm glad you're teaching that to people. Zach, what's one thing that you do every single day? I check Facebook Marketplace for a good deal every day. Okay. And what is one of your favorite undergraduate classes that you had while you were at MSU? So I think the undergraduate class that made the most impact on me was Marketing 313 with Doug Hughes, who okay. is no longer at MSU, sadly, but I love that class. I don't think I had a chance to take that one, so now I feel like I missed out. It was professional selling, so I loved it. it was awesome. Okay, I love that. And Zach, what clubs were you in as a student? So I was in MSUMA with you, um, uh, and as well as GSLS, the Global Sales Leadership Society, um, and Cutting Edge. Wonderful. We'll talk about those a little bit more as we get into the podcast. What was one of your favorite clubs that you were a part of? If you had to choose one, what would so rise to the top? I feel like this is a probably pretty easy one. I love the leadership opportunities I had at the Marketing Association and some really fond memories with you and the rest of our executive board for the years that we were there. Would you believe I did not pay him to say that? But great answer, yeah. Zach. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> what was? We had a blast. We, we did. Blast. We had so much fun. That's I loved MSUMA. Zach, what was the most memorable sporting moment that you remember from MSU? I kind of have two here, one that I witnessed in person and one that I didn't. Um, I wasn't actually, I was still a senior in high school at this point, but I was at the stadium standing like 50 feet away when MSU beat Notre Dame with the fake field goal, Little Giants in 2010. Um, that was extremely memorable because I was right there. The, it was so unexpected. What a big win. And then my junior year when uh, MSU beat the Sanford in the Rose Bowl uh, with a crazy fourth down stop. I was not there, but I remember watching that on TV and that, that game was just incredibly uh, amazing and so hype and exciting. Those are great answers. We were at MSU during some of the best football years that I can remember. Uh, so undoubtedly, some really fun. That, that is <laughs> and then last question for you, Zach. Did you prefer to study at the law library or the business library and why? I was always at the law library and I feel like it's because I usually had a significant group of people and they just, uh, the law library collaboration rooms were, were nice and usually available. And so we were always doing these great meetings there, even with people that weren't in the business college too, so. Good answer. I use the law library as well, but for the opposite reason, I really liked the quiet. <laughs> so <laughs> we were yeah. probably just a couple of rooms away. Awesome. Well, Zach, thanks for answering all of our rapid response questions. We're going to dive a little bit more now into some of your experiences that you had while you're at MSU. Sound good? Let's do it. Okay. So Zach, I know that you were very involved on campus while we were at state in particular, because you and I were involved in some of the same clubs. Can you first tell us about your experience as a student and what made you want to get so involved? 
Well, some of it played into, I lived at home for the first two years, my freshman and sophomore year, and then lived on or near campus my junior and senior year. So for me, I, I appreciated the opportunity to get involved with students through clubs when I was living, uh, not necessarily on campus. Um, I tried to spend as much time as possible on campus, just connecting with peers uh, through organizations. And that to me was the easiest way because I wasn't living with other students. I was a commuter student for two years uh, and, and made a lot of friends that I've stayed in touch with to this day through my involvement um, as a student on campus. Uh, I also had uh, four internships um, throughout, throughout my time at MSU, three of which were summer internships, but one of which was uh, sophomore and junior year while I was on campus. Um, and, and those connected me too. Um, in a couple of cases, some of the internships, I was working alongside other students um, and, and connecting with them, which again, improved my experience and just the way I made relationships with people. And Zach, I, I feel like you were the energizer bunny while we were at MSU, like in the best possible way. How did you decide like what to dedicate your energy to? Because at the end of the day, there's limited time. That is so true. I, I've always tried to bring the energy to the room and, and I appreciate, uh, I appreciate the people that have encouraged me over the years, but I would say when it came down to picking which clubs to be participate in, I picked the ones that I knew would make the most impact, not only building relationships while I was at school, but also setting up myself for success in the future down the road, whether it be a career or just meeting people and connecting with people. So Zach, looking at some of those clubs and internships, how did you get started in them? Like, what was step one for your involvement? So I spent a lot of time going to all the career fairs and uh, student event fairs. And, and I also had the benefit of a, my dad who worked on campus. And my freshman year, I asked him a lot of questions. He worked in the business college. And I said, which organizations do I need to talk to? Uh, and it, I guess it really wasn't just him, but I also connected with other people, uh, mostly professors or faculty or staff that worked in the business college or on campus. And every time I did, I asked them, what organizations would you recommend being involved with? Which ones have good reputations? Which ones have a solid leadership? Uh, and that really helped me narrow down how to get involved. Awesome. So Zach, which ones did have the most impact on your career? Now that we're a handful of years removed from school, looking back, which ones were the most impactful? It's hard to pinpoint one or organization that had the most impact. I think the more organizations you're involved with, the more impact it will have on you. Because to me, every meeting was a networking event. Every meeting was an event to make a new connection, whether it be with another student or with a corporate guest that was coming that was usually a recruiter. Uh, I probably made the most connections through MSUMA, um, but given my involvement with the sales miner too, the sales miner had so many different networking events and competition opportunities that also really connected me with uh, companies that I either interviewed with considered working for at some point, uh, and eventually to the company that I do work for now, which is Ford. So Zach, take us through your first job at Ford to where you are at now, and maybe talk us through a little bit of what that courting process was as you were recruiting for Ford. Yeah, I knew pretty early on I wanted to work for Ford. I actually remember going to a recruiter on one of the days Ford was at campus, um, a recruiter that I stayed in touch with for three and a half years that really was the one that pushed me to get this job, Kathleen. And I told her as a sophomore, like a first semester sophomore, uh, listen, I want to, I want an internship at Ford. I know it's typically a year early. And I ended up not taking an internship with Ford that I ended up not being offered an, even an interview because they're looking more for a more senior student. But every time I saw members from the, the Ford team, I, I would connect with them and say, listen, I'm looking to get a, a job with Ford. 
I'd like to get your information. I'd like to stay in touch. And I also did my best when they were in town to connect with them. And then as I progressed into my uh, years as a student, I interviewed for an internship and then I came back and interviewed for a full-time job uh, my senior year. And that was even after the typical October career season. I didn't interview for my full-time job until uh, January, but I, I was able to get that interview because I had really good relationships with the with the people at Ford. Um, and I think I would have had a similar situation with, with other organizations too. I really like your resilience, Zach, like knowing that this was a company that you wanted to be a part of. I think that is one of the pieces of advice I'd like to give students as well is if you know that it's something you want to do, don't take your first no as a definitive no, because there's always another recruiter, another year, more experience that you can gain that puts you as a better candidate in a future, at a future state and time. So I love that you stayed in touch and, and continued to work with the Ford recruiting team to find ultimately what was the best position for you. So looking at your full-time career now, what was that first job that you had at Ford and how did that get you to where you are at now? So I started with Ford as a zone manager, which is a position that gives you responsibility for uh, working uh, with dealerships some in some corner of the country, de depending on need. We have 21 regions that cover the, the country's worth of four dealerships. Uh, I moved through several different zone manager positions and now uh, work as a commercial business manager responsible for uh, the high dollar uh, commercial trucks and the clients that buy a hundred at a time instead of one or two at a time, like most consumers. I would say as I progressed as a zone manager, uh, I got to, at one point, the most senior zone manager on our team here in DC, and I was responsible for the zone that did more volume, more dollars, and more responsibility than pretty much anyone else on the East Coast. Uh, and not only that, I was the most, most senior zone manager, and it gave me a chance to try to balance uh, heavy responsibility with my job and also advising a team that were technically my peers, but I was kind of the shop foreman uh, and, and answered questions that came up that maybe people didn't go directly to our boss with, but came to me first. So throughout that progression, what was the most transformative role that you had, or maybe the most transformative moment in time that you had in your career? To me, it was, I think it was that, that high responsibility um, metro area um, position because it, it helped me understand teamwork and it helped me understand coaching people that are new and helping them explain something that I, as you know, a five-year veteran, was very used to talking about and, and understanding that someone straight out of college, uh, I could talk about this, but if I don't use the right words, they are going to totally miss everything and it's not really going to be value added. So being able to simplify things when teaching someone else just was just a, such a ridiculously valuable skill that I've gained through not only with my teammates, but interacting with clients as well. It's funny that you say that because it's making me think about some of the roles I've had as well. And it's, it's almost the idea that you don't know how much you know until you meet somebody that doesn't know it. And then it's really cool yes. to see how you can impart that knowledge or that wisdom on somebody that's kind of newer to the field. So I love that you've had that chance to coach new people coming, especially right out of college and hopefully some Spartans along the way. Oh yeah, quite a few. We love Spartans here. <laughs> love to hear that. And Zach, you've always been involved in sales, at least since I've known you in different ways, whether that be the sales minor or even now in, in your job at Ford. How did you know that you wanted to go into sales? And did you always know that you wanted to go into sales? So my first sales job was when I was 14 years old, uh, just like freshman in high school, I got recruited to uh, come out to Michigan, the, the Spartan Stadium, uh, and and sell water um, at, in the stands as one of the like beverage boys that runs up and down the stands with a blue tray. And, and I did that. And my first day uh, out of like 25 people doing it, I was the second to top performer. And after my first year of doing it, um, really after the first four or five times, I, I did it six, seven games a year for eight years in a row. Uh, I was the top performer and eventually I just outpaced everyone else by so much more that, uh, that I kept doing it for all of high school and all of college. Uh, so I basically never missed a game for eight years, which was fun, uh, but made a ridiculous amount of money doing it. 
Um, and then picked up a couple other jobs too. I mean, like at one point I had a, a you know, my own kind of lawn and uh, snow business. And that's, that's a sales position too. I took a sales internship my freshman year of college and, and saw kind of a new side where I was selling books door to door with Southwest Advantage. Uh, each of those times I, I had, I had windows where I was really successful and really not. Um, but the success that I had gave me a taste of kind of why I wanted to go in sales and why I was excited about that. So Zach, you are at no shortage of experience in sales. So tell me like, what is one really important skill that you think somebody in sales needs to have? I would say it's language. Uh, and, and I think, uh, the ability to talk to people is one thing. If, you, if you're friendly and you have uh, courage, I would say, to go up and approach a new person, that's awesome. That's what a lot of people think as um, like, I'm an outgoing person, I wish to be good for sales. But I think it comes down to the ability to ask questions. So once you've had the courage to talk to someone new, I've closed a lot of deals because I just asked the right question and it's not necessarily even in fact finding, but just ask questions about your client and ask questions that uh, get you to know them more. And if you can get them talking about something they're really proud about and continue, you know, if you see your client a couple of times a year and you, hey, hey, how's it going? I haven't haven't seen you in a while. How's your uh, your kids doing? Or how how's your, you know, maybe he's a biker and you ask him about how his bike tour was. That's something that's really impactful for a lot of uh, customers or clients or partners. And, and if you as a salesperson have the ability to ask good questions and manage your language well to make someone feel comfortable, that is really invaluable in the field of sales. So what I hear you saying is like being inquisitive and using language as a tool for building relationships and then really honing in on what are going to be the most important things for this client is what's going to essentially clinch a lot of the sales for you at the end of the day and, and, and maintaining those relationships. Is that yes, fair? Yes, I would okay. agree with that. So Zach, what's like the key to building relationships then? Is, is it asking the right questions? It is. And, and I guess I, I jumped the gun a bit because what I, it's, you know, kind of what I think building a relationship means is your relationship is built on more than just the work-related thing that you're talking about. So if you get to know them personally and you get to know about their family or their hobbies or what's important to them, maybe, um, their status with their company is important, or maybe how they're uh, progressing with their family at home is important. Uh, a lot for a lot of clients I've talked to, I know it's their kids or their grandkids. Or uh, I had one client that was really big into his spin class. He was so proud of that the fact that three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, he taught a spin class, and and uh, it would come up because he's always like, I can't schedule a, uh, a meeting during this. Um, so, and I think getting to know your, your clients on a personal basis really um, helps with that relationship. Yeah, I love that. It can't all be about the business. It has to be about a little bit more than that. So Zach, is there any advice you would like to give our listeners? So the advice that I have is related to more of the career. Like I think about how I came out of Michigan State, I felt like I was a really ambitious student and wanted to be ambitious in the workforce. But what I didn't realize was as I started working, um, my ambitions changed uh, just a little bit. You know, so many students these days want to come out and be a vice president or a CEO. And that might have been me. I might have wanted like, oh, being a CEO or a vice president of sales is so cool. But just in my personal life or in my family life, uh, things change. Your, your values may change once you get into your career and, and you realize I value uh, time, job flexibility or time off or even benefits with a company more than I do a high paying salary or an important position. So that's something that I wish I had considered more. Um, and I'm glad I ended up with a company that that actually aligns with my values even more than I thought it did when I left um, my time at Michigan State. So, you know, if you as a student think that you value job with flexibility, make sure that you consider that in your, in your job career, that um, flexibility and benefits are line up with what's important to you in the long run and recognize that that may change. How do you think a student can assess that as they're going through a recruiting, Zach? Is it about 
uh, what the recruiters say about culture? Is it about the values of the company? What are the best tools for a student to start looking at that? That's a great question because one of the things I struggled the most with as a student was deciphering what a recruiter told me because I felt like they all sounded the same. How am I supposed to how am I supposed to understand the difference between what one company is and what another company is when they all use the same words? Um, so to me, internships, job shadows, uh, talking with people just outside of the immediate recruiting team are, are valuable tools that you as a student can use to assess, you know, what, what is this company actually like? Let me ask questions of people that I get to work with. Can I do a job shadow for a day? Can I ask questions of the people at the company? What's valuable to them? What's important? What is, what is a week of work look like? Sometimes I often wish that companies would, uh, almost do like, a YouTube style vlogs of what a, a day uh, employee's life is like in, in the marketing department, have someone kind of walk through, what does a day look like at this company? Because uh, as a student, that's to me what was valuable. I wanted to see what a day looked like with the companies I worked at. That's awesome, Zach. Thank you for sharing that advice. And thank you for joining us today. We're, uh, we're really happy we had a chance to talk to you. Yeah, thanks for having me and uh, go green. Go white. And for our listeners who are interested in connecting with Zach, you can find him on LinkedIn. Make sure you also check out other episodes of the Marketing Spotlight. You can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, YouTube, and almost anywhere else you listen to podcasts. We'll talk to you next time.